Hi, my name is Dale Turner, and I teach a variety of acoustic and electric rhythm guitar styles here at Hollywood's Musicians Institute. And uh, that passage you just heard me picking through is very similar to Bob Dylan's Blown in the Wind from his second studio album, Freewheeling, Freewheeling Bob Dylan. Uh, and uh, the original tune, actually, he has a capo up on the seventh fret. Uh, throughout his career, he's performed it in all sorts of different keys, so we're going to just kind of stick to no capo for now and really try to focus on the uh, pick style approaches he uses to get a real natural, organic, relaxed, and spontaneous sound out of a fairly common sequence of chords. Uh, a thing that I've noticed a lot with students around here that maybe have not heard of Bob Dylan, uh, the students that are very into technical analysis and, and all that sort of don't really get what he's about. Uh, and because of that, they have a hard time really breaking down all the subtleties of his style. So I'm going to do my best to kind of break those down to you so that you can kind of learn this style and, and it'll still kind of sound natural, relaxed, and groovy at the same time. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, the, the sequence of chords that I just played, which uh, got ourselves one of several possible fingerings for G. And then after that, a series of slash chords where if you look at your transcription, you'll see different letters after a slash, C, C slash B, D slash A, D slash F sharp. And that's actually with the thumb of my fretting hand. And then back to G. Let's put those together real slowly. I'll count you in. It's in cut time, so I'll count off one and two and. Okay. Uh, now to kind of get into the, all, the, all the elements that he adds to the basic chords that make it Dylan-esque, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a separation with the pick between the low register and upper register that'll be sort of a boom chick boom chick sound where it'll be bass note chord, bass note chord, but for all the chords in this sequence. And this is where I'd like you to, to, uh, to experiment a little bit to, to kind of back off with digging in so hard with your pick Pick a little lighter than you might ordinarily so that all the subtleties and nuances of the dynamics of your pick hand start to come out. I also would recommend that you don't squeeze your pick. Hold it real relaxed and loose just so as, it, as you're kind of raking your pick across the strings, uh, it's just got a nice, nice even kind of rub to it. Here we go. One, two. I'll count you in a little faster than, than that. That's about half speed. This will be the, the actual tempo. One, two. And again, real relaxed with your pick hand here. If you, if you can see my, my right hand, the pick is just just hanging in there. So it's just, you can hear, here you get a little extra airiness to the tone instead of if you're gonna pick real hard, gripping the pick. A little bit of a nicer sound. Okay, the next ingredient we're gonna tack onto this is double strumming each of the chords in the upper register after hitting the bass notes. So it'll be one and two and one and two and one and two and for each of the passing chords. Uh, I will count you in again. One, two, one, two. Okay, and at the regular speed, one, two. Uh, 
another oddball thing I'll talk about for a second is uh, as you're switching chords here with your fretting hand, don't really feel like you gotta so crazily make an instant leap, you know, big jerky motion to switch each chord in time. You can kind of be relaxed with your fretting hand as well, picking it up a microsecond before you need to outline the next chord, which means you're gonna hear the occasional open string pop in there, which is part of what actually makes it sound natural and relaxed and Dylan-like. Uh, so I guess we're kind of getting into a technical explanation of how to sound uh, what some people might not think is technical, but it, but it actually is. Uh, I would also add that he's singing over the top of everything he's playing, and it's very improvisatory, the way he's kind of mixing up his strumming approaches and his, and his voicings. Uh, the last figure we have here is just that, actually, a mixture of all the little, in, uh, little ingredients we've just picked through. Uh, quarter note strums in the upper register, that double strumming eighth note, uh, between each bass note we just did a moment ago, and uh, a little bit of extra activity in the, in the bass as well this time with uh, a couple of hammer-ons from open strings into our G chord. So I'm going to walk you through this again at half speed and uh, see, see if you can uh, follow along. One, and two, and... Okay, so I'm feeling pretty relaxed here. Uh, I'm gonna try to kind of get that same, same feel going here at the, the regular speed. Uh, again, real relaxed picking hand, just kind of staying in the pocket. Here you can kind of see I'm bouncing in eighth notes now. One, and two, and one, and two, and one, and two. Gripping the pick real, real loosely, and uh, let's see what comes out. One, two, one, two. Okay, uh, there's a, a great documentary out fairly recently that you can see footage of Bob Dylan in this golden era that a lot of people referred to, uh, his folk, folk music period in the early 60s, uh, Martin Scorsese's no, no Direction Home. It's got footage of him playing this song, which is basically his first hit uh, that kind of launched his career. And uh, you probably pick, catch a few other performances of him at the uh, Newport Folk Festival over the years. And that's kind of when you'll see him play the same tune in different keys, different capo positions and all that. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I really encourage you to check out as much of Bob Dylan's acoustic work as you can. And uh, next time you're down here in L.A., please stop by and give us a visit. And uh, thanks very much.